If you're developing in a neighborhood, you should be providing something that adds to that neighborhood, not something that takes away. I've got a bit of a bone to pick with most commercial real estate developers and developments because I feel like for far too long, commercial real estate development has gotten away from really what it's doing, which is developing and building communities. It seems like far too many people are focused more on the numbers and having a profitable or super profitable project, which is great, right? Because we're not here to do this charitably. It's a lot of work and there's a lot of risk and it's not an easy job. But there are a number of intangible items that keep getting left off the list that I feel like could really change the way that neighborhoods and communities look at developers. There's no hiding the fact that most communities, most neighbors, most people probably have a very negative outlook on developers. Right? They come in, they tear down old buildings, and they build back something that the neighborhood didn't want in the first place. We see that time and time again. In fact, I was at a community meeting the other night in North Nashville, and a lot of the residents there were saying the exact same thing. There were deals being pitched, and the neighborhood kept saying, why are you bringing us deals and developments that the neighborhood doesn't want? We've expressed multiple times that we do not want this in our neighborhood. Please don't bring this here. I see that time and time again. And it seems like most commercial real estate developers will look at neighborhoods as the enemy. And that doesn't make any sense to me at all. If you're developing in a neighborhood, you should be providing something that adds to that neighborhood, not something that takes away. Otherwise, you shouldn't be developing. Go sell you know, securities or something on Wall Street where everybody likes to be like that. Don't become a neighborhood developer and bring stuff that people just frankly don't want. Now, let's get into exactly what I'm talking about. Right now in Nashville, we're seeing developers coming in. And again, it's totally fine. I love the growth. I'm not talking bad about developers because I am one myself. But People are coming in and doing everything that they can to absolutely maximize the development on every site. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. But we're taking a new approach on a project that I'm doing called US 41, where we're actually going the exact opposite of that way. Instead of trying to figure out how we can build buildings to the absolute edges of the, of the building envelope, and how can we build as tall as we possibly can, we're looking at it and going, how can we keep as few of the buildings on site as possible and create something that has almost the exact opposite feel? This project only has 18% building coverage, which means only 18% of the land is going to be covered by buildings. And they're all single story. Some are gonna have rooftop decks, but that is not changing a whole lot that's already existing. We're actually maintaining what's there. And on top of that, we're building in amenities for the neighborhood because this is a development that's going to be providing back to the neighborhood. That's what everything should be. Developers often don't realize how the built environment truly affects people's everyday lives and having beautiful community parks instead of check cashing stores really does add to the quality of life that people have. So the amenities that we're gonna be offering are dog parks, playgrounds, we're even gonna have a stage and an event lawn. That event lawn, when it's not being used for a concert, could be a great place to just go throw a Frisbee over lunch. And it's a free park that we are bringing with this project for the neighbors in the community. And there are ways to make that profitable, right? We're not just looking at the numbers and going, how can we monetize this dog park? How can we monetize this playground? It, it doesn't matter to us. We feel that if we build out beautiful, basic amenities like this, the neighborhood will want to come hang out on site, which means then they will likely spend money with our tenants that are on site. So it's a win-win for everybody in that scenario. Some other intangibles that you could add to a project include electric vehicle charging stations, right? I mean, just doing small things here and there to help make your development, the neighborhood, the world a better place can go a long way when you're looking at the quote unquote profitability of a project. Now, obviously I'm very passionate about this ethos. I'm a hardcore community and neighborhood developer. If you've been following me on this channel for any amount of time, you know how important to me my neighborhood is. East Nashville, Madison, that's where we do the majority of our projects. 
And it's because there is something special on this side of town that I want to help maintain. We can actually do that as commercial real estate developers. Instead of taking away from neighborhoods, we can come in and develop, yet still give back and make the neighborhood even cooler and better than before. The majority of our projects, even though they are new construction, are focused on small and local businesses. We try to avoid corporate or national tenants at all costs. And so far we've successfully done that. A lot of that is through how I design and plan our projects. They just don't fit for your national corporate guys. But also, I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm basically the exact opposite of corporate, right? I'm, I'm a commercial real estate developer that's covered in tattoos, has a beard, and we kind of do whatever the hell we want around here. So we're kind of forging our own path, doing our own thing. And that's very attractive for a lot of small business owners in this area that are doing the exact same thing. That's one of the big reasons why we decided to do a project called The Wash. It's a six bay car wash conversion into micro restaurants and a bar. That project just inherently screams local businesses. When I actually first started it, we had talked about going and grabbing some of the bigger national guys, or you know, maybe some of the more established Nashville restaurants and helping them get a foothold in the East Nashville market. But as my partner and I started talking about it more, it made more sense for these 380 square foot bays, which provide an inherently affordable way to open up your opportunity. Why don't we just go with smaller local guys and give them a chance that they may not otherwise have? And that is how we can actively contribute to a, a neighborhood's character and the atmosphere that makes it so amazing to live in that neighborhood, instead of just bringing something again that no one really cares about. So I know that I'm probably ranting, thank you for coming to my TED talk, but I feel that it's important that commercial real estate developers, investors, even lenders take that into account when you're going through these projects. Think about how we can actually give back to the community and create a better neighborhood, which in turn will make your development do better than projects that are just based on cold, hard numbers. So I'm gonna leave you with this challenge. Next time you're going into a project, think of how you can work with the small mom and pop shops, because not only will you help make that neighborhood a better place, you're giving a small local entrepreneur the opportunity to make money and feed their family. And maybe you're not changing the world, but you're changing that neighborhood and you're adding to it. If you'd like to dive further into that strategy and not just get the emotional rant side of things, check out this video here where I dive into my neighborhood niche strategy so you can learn how to do it too.